Hello, my name is Nicholas Vitek from Living Worlds Games. Today I'm going to walk you through the basic rules for Schlock Mercenary Capital Offensive's learning game. The asymmetrical objectives of the learning game are for the drone player to simply eliminate all three toughs, or for the toughs player to lock all three teleport gates and then eliminate all the drones on the board. We will discuss how to eliminate characters and drones later, and also how to lock teleport gates. First, we'll look at setting up the game. Arrange the large floor tiles 4A, 5B, 7A, and 8B per the illustration in your rulebook. Place the two armory tiles, three teleport gate tiles, and the three airlock tiles on top of the large floor tiles as indicated in the same illustration. Take three drone character tokens. These are the one inch round discs that show the drone on them and place one drone on each of the teleport gates. Then, take five more drones and place them in front of the drone player. This forms a drone reserve. Also, take the drone character sheet and place it in front of the drone player. The drone player is now ready to play. The Tusk player will take the Tagon, Schlock, and Elf character tokens and place one on each of the airlocks. It is the Tusk player's decision as to which character goes on each airlock. Now the Tusk player takes the matching three character sheets and arranges them in front of them. On each character sheet, place health and armor tokens on the matching spots on the character sheet. Also, place two Appalette grenade tokens and the matching spots on Tagon's character sheet. The last order of business for the Tusk player is to take the first, second, and third turn order tokens and place one on each of the character's sheet. This will be set in the turn order that each Tusk will take. Place the turn order tokens with the black text on the white background facing up. The Tufts player is now ready to play. The learning game is played in rounds. In a round, all three Tufts will take a turn, and the drone player will take a turn in between each of the Tufts' turn. The drone player takes the first turn of the game, and usually takes the first turn of each round. Also, the drone player will never take two turns back to back. So, the drone player will take a turn, then the character who has the turn order token number one will take a turn then the drone player, and then the tough character with turn order token number two, then the drone player, and then the tough with turn order token number three. Once the third tough has taken a turn, the round ends. Now that we have the basic structure for rounds and turns, let us look at how a turn is taken. We'll start with the drone player's turn since they take the first turn in the game. At its core, both drone and tough turns are similar, though the special actions and inherent abilities of each manipulate the way the turn is taken. The drone player starts his turn by determining the number of commands available. He rolls three dice and keeps the median or middle die. For example, if he had rolled a 1, 3, and 5, the drone player would have three commands this turn. A 1, 3, and 6 would also result in three commands, while a 1, 5, 5 would result in five commands being available. The drone player may spend his commands in one of two ways. Each command may either be spent to spawn a new drone or to activate a drone on the board. To spawn a new drone, the drone player uses one of its commands and places a drone from the drone reserve onto the board onto any unoccupied and unlocked teleport gate. We'll discuss lock and teleport gates later. If all the teleport gates are locked or occupied, the drone player may not spend commands to spawn new drones until a gate is unoccupied. Once locked, teleport gates may not be unlocked. The second way a drone player may spend a command is to activate a drone. The drone player simply selects a drone already on the board and that has not yet been activated this turn, and declares that drone is going to be activated. This uses up one of the drone player's commands this turn. A drone may not be activated twice in the same drone player turn, however, a drone that was just spawned this turn may be activated. When a drone is activated, it takes a turn. A drone turn and a tough turn are identical. First, the drone rolls to determine how much movement it will have available during its turn. This is done by rolling dice equal to its move attribute as shown on the character sheet and keeping the die that is indicated on the sheet. For drones, you'll roll three dice and keep the median or middle number die. For instance, if you roll a 1, 3, and 6, you'll have three movement when you take a movement action. If you roll a 2, 2, 6, you'll have 2 movement when you take a movement action. After determining that drone's movement, the drone now gets 2 actions. This is indicated on the drone's character sheet in the area marked Actions, 
In the learning game, an action may be spent on taking a movement action, a sprint action, or using a special action. Each action may only be used once during that character's turn. Note, each special action counts as a different action. We'll discuss this later. The movement action allows that character to move across the board. Simply declare your movement action and you may move that character a number of spaces or squares equal to the movement determined at the start of the turn. Movement is taken orthogonally. This means that the character may move to an adjacent square up, down, left, or right from its current position. Characters may not move diagonal. Characters may not move through walls or infrastructure. Characters may not move through enemy occupied spaces, though they may move through friendly occupied spaces. A character may not end its turn on a friendly occupied space, or it will be eliminated. The sprint action is similar to the movement action. It may be taken in addition to or instead of the movement action. When a sprint action is taken, the character may move two spaces following normal movement rules. Special actions are noted through the open palm symbol next to the action's name. Special actions are typically attacks. Using a special action uses up one of the character's actions during its turn. In the learning game, all special actions are attacks, so we'll look at how to attack in this game. Some characters will have multiple special actions. For instance, take on a schlock. Schlock may use one action to use his lunch special action, and he may use a second action to use his plasma cannon special action. Now, attacking has a simple system to follow. First, you decide what attack you want to use. In this case, the drone character has served subpoena, so we'll use that attack. Next, you check line of sight. This is done by drawing an imaginary straight line from the attacker space's center dot to the target space's center dot. The line may not go through a wall or infrastructure. Furthermore, it may not pass directly through the center dot of an occupied space. If the line goes through a wall, infrastructure, or center dot of an occupied space, line of sight is blocked. Otherwise, you'll have line of sight to your target. Now, you roll dice equal to the action's attack value. For Sir Subpoena, it is one die. This is indicated by the number in front of the red die symbol next to the special action. Every attack has an auto miss bar. This is a red and white bar segmented into six sections with the numbers one through six on each section. Any number that is black on a white background is considered an automatic miss or auto miss due to the weapon's characteristics. For serve subpoena, a one in three are auto misses. Any number that is white on a red background is considered a hit at this point. If a die rolled an auto miss, remove that die from the attack. Next, we will check range. For attacks in a straight orthogonal line, range is very simple. Starting at the attacker's space, count spaces or squares to the target's space. You do not count the attacker's space. It is considered zero. So in this case, the target is at range three. For attacks at an angle, create an imaginary L between the attacker and the target. Count the number of spaces along the long leg of the L. Then count the number of spaces along the short leg of the L and then have it. You will round down. Add these two numbers together to get the range. In our example, the long leg of the L is three spaces and the short is also three spaces, half to 1.5, rounded down to one for a total range of three plus one equals range four. Any die that rolls less than the range is removed from the attack. Any die that rolls equal to or greater than the range is considered a hit at this point. Once range has been checked, the defender rolls a defense die equal to his defense attribute on his character sheet. Typically for toughs, this is three, and for drones, it is two dice. Once the defender rolls his defense dice, the defense dice are compared against the remaining attacker's dice. A single defense die will remove a single attack die of equal or larger value. A defense die of five will remove one attack die that shows a five or smaller. Any defense dice that do not remove an attack dice are lost. Defense dice cannot be added together to get a larger number. For example, you may not use a defense die that shows a 2 and one that shows a 3 to eliminate an attack die that shows a 5. Any attack die that are still remaining are hits. 
Each hit will remove one armor or one health from the target. Armor is removed first and then health. If the last health is removed from a target, the target is eliminated and its character token is removed from the board. Drone tokens that are eliminated return to the drone reserve. This is a full rolls for an attack. Once the active drone has finished its two actions, its turn is over and the drone player may spend any remaining commands to spawn more drones or to activate other drones. Once the drone player is out of commands, the drone player's turn is over and it is now the Tufts character's turn based on the turnover tokens. Now let's talk about winning the game and inherent abilities. To win the game, the drone player simply has to eliminate all three Tufts. Just kill all three of them, they don't come back. The Tough player has to lock all three teleport gates and then eliminate the drones that remain on the board. As long as the teleport gate is unlocked, more drones may come into play via commands. Drones that are eliminated return to the drone reserve and may be brought back or spawned later in the game. To lock a teleport gate, the Tough player must move a Tough to be standing on the teleport gate. If that Tough remains alive on the teleport gate until the beginning of any Tough's turn, that gate is locked and a teleport gate lock token is placed on the teleport gate. This means that if a Tagon ends his turn on a teleport gate and the drone player fails to eliminate him on that turn, on the next Tufts character turn, for example, Elf, Tagon will automatically lock down that teleport gate. Once all three teleport gates are locked, it is time to finish eliminating drones. Now, every character has a basic special action that serves as their main attack. Elf and Tagon have laser pistols, and Schlock has a plasma cannon. The drones have served subpoena. Some characters have inherent abilities as marked by the DMA string illustration next to the name. Drones have the legal assist inherent ability that gives their serve subpoena attack additional dice based on the number of drones swarming over the target. A drone serve subpoena power gets plus one attack value for every other drone adjacent to the target. Note, serve subpoena can be used at range. Legal assist only activates if the assisting drones are adjacent to the target being attacked. Elf may tiptoe through the tulips and may move through enemy occupied spaces. When she does, she gets a free stomp attack against that target. This happens every time she enters an enemy space. Note, however, if she ends her turn in an enemy occupied space, she is automatically eliminated. Tagon has two inherent abilities. One is only Cheetah's Prosper. Whenever he makes a die roll, be it an attack, movement, or defense, he may reroll one die of his choice and keep the second result. This only applies to his dice rolls. He cannot reroll someone's attack against him. His second inherent ability is that of using the armory to replenish his epaulet grenades instead of getting more armor. We haven't talked about the armory yet, but we will in a moment. Schlock doesn't have an inherent ability, but he does have a second special action, and this one is called Lunch. If Schlock uses his Lunch attack, any hits, armor, or health he causes results in him gaining health. He is not limited to his starting health. If he has 5 health, and he does 2 hits of damage, he would gain 2 more health to a total of 7 health. Note that if his target only has 1 health token remaining, and Schlock does 2 hits of damage, the target is eliminated, and Schlock still gains two health tokens. Tagon also has a special action, and that is his epaulet grenades. When he uses an epaulet grenade, he picks any space that he has line of sight to and is also within range six. He may not throw a grenade over a wall or through infrastructure. The grenade targets the space that he picks in all eight adjacent spaces provided that a wall isn't blocking the adjacent space from the target space. Treat each space as a separate attack, meaning you'll roll attack dice, remove auto misses, roll defense dice, and eliminate attack dice, then deal damage separately before moving on to the next space and rolling again. Roll for the target space first, and then subsequently roll for adjacent spaces in any order. Note, later on, the Chupacaso rule will come into effect, but this is not part of the learning game. Earlier, I mentioned armories. Once each turn, whenever a tough or drone is on an armory, the tough or drone may take an armor token from the supply and place the armor token on his or her character sheet. Drones place an armor token 
on the drone character token on the board. There is no limit to the amount of armor that a tough or drone may have. Now, instead of taking an armor token, take a might instead replenish a used epaulette grenade. Note, a character may only benefit from each armory once per turn. If, on turn one, the character steps on an armory, he gets an armor token. Let's say he ends his turn there. On his next turn, since he's on that armory, he gets another armor token. If he has the movement and can move to a different armory, in the learning game that's a seven movement away, he would get another armor token. A character gains no benefit from entering, leaving, and re-entering the same armory in one turn. Each armory only pays off once per turn. Those are the basic rules for the learning game. Please let us know if you have any questions and we'll provide you answers at once. Thank you.